Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 137 I'll take a look at REST versus messaging, a question I've actually been getting quite a bit recently. You can find a list of all of the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday on my website at uh, developer2architect.com slash lessons. As a matter of fact, uh, most of the material for my lessons come from these two books I wrote with my friend and colleague Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and also Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. So let's talk about REST versus messaging. It seems like we continue to have this question about which one should I use. Um, it turns out that the answer is on my shirt. So I hope you enjoyed this short lesson. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> of course, it does depend. Uh, but let's actually analyze this and see the trade-offs and use cases for each of these uh, to try to give you some guidance in terms of making a decision about REST versus messaging. Uh, let's say that we have an order placement service and a payment service. Um, I could use REST to communicate between those, or on those same ones, I can actually use messaging. Which one should I use? Which one's most appropriate? Which one's better? Well, again, my shirt gives the answer. It depends. Um, however, the real question is not REST versus messaging. But what it really boils down to is synchronous versus asynchronous calls. Regardless if we use message queues, topics, a service, uh, maybe even async rest, what it really boils down to is the question not necessarily of rest versus messaging, but whether we should use synchronous or asynchronous communication. And I'm going to show synchronous with a solid line and asynchronous with a dotted line. As a matter of fact, uh, let's take a look and model these two and then look at the differences. So if I've got my order placement and payment, I'm using synchronous calls. If I place an order, I have to wait for that order to be placed. It comes into the order placement service, takes 400 milliseconds to place the order, and then five or 50 milliseconds in network latency to get over to the payment service. That takes 1200 milliseconds to apply the payment, sends that response back another 50 milliseconds. And finally, I get the answer. And if we add up all this time, including that latency, we get around 1700 milliseconds. Uh, but if I were to use asynchronous communication for that same operation or request to place an order, I have to wait for the order placement service, it does all of its inserting and validating and generating order IDs, sends a message to a queue, which takes about 25 milliseconds, and then returns the response back to me. And if we add this up, it's 425 milliseconds. Now at the same time, it's 25 milliseconds to get to the payment service and 1200 milliseconds to apply it. If we kind of compare these two, we can see the first obvious choice about asynchronous communication. It took us 1,700 milliseconds to place an order synchronously, asynchronously only 425 milliseconds. So we can see this is one of the techniques for creating responsive systems, but also increasing the overall performance. And so asynchronous is a great benefit here from a performance or responsiveness standpoint. You know, the other problem is, if payment suddenly becomes unavailable with synchronous calls, I can't place that order. I have a dependency synchronously along all the services I need in order to satisfy that request. However, with asynchronous, I don't need payment. So the point is, if payment's not available, I can still place an order. And that places a heavy advantage on this decoupling ability with an asynchronous communication. Well, it certainly looks so far that asynchronous communication using messaging or whichever mechanism to implement it is really the way to go. But maybe not. Because you see, with synchronous communications, I know that the payment has been made. But the problem with async 
is although I've already received my thank you for your order, I don't know when that payment is going to be applied. And so from a completeness standpoint, synchronous communications are the way to go to guarantee that all parts of that request are completed. As a matter of fact, there's another aspect here. Let's say that I do a payment on synchronous and all of a sudden my credit card expired. Well, I can immediately report back an error to the user trying to place that order saying you have to update your credit card or give me a different credit card number. However, with async, that same credit card expires. But how do I let the customer know? You see, even though this is faster and more decoupled, now I've got more sophisticated error handling that I have to do because as far as the customer knows, the order is on its way. And that kind of uh, really gives a little bit of advantage to synchronous communications for all of the error handling that we have to do. Now, it's interesting. There's one other thing we didn't consider with the choice between sync versus async. Suppose our product owner says payment is required when placing an order. Well, with synchronous communications, it's part of our overall workflow, so we have to do that. But in this particular case, we can't use async because it's decoupled and might not even be available. And so you see the other choice between these may in fact even be data, or not data, but business rule driven. And in this case, when these kind of rules apply, uh, synchronous is the right choice. Now, there's one other thing I want to talk about here, and that is a different kind of workflow and use case for choosing REST versus messaging. And the one I'm going to show you is perhaps the most popular or common question or dilemma that we face. Let's say that I have a wish list service and a corresponding catalog service. Well, the user says, show me my wish list. Well, I need to return back the item ID and all the item descriptions. But I don't have those descriptions. They're over in the catalog service. So I have to go over to the catalog service and ask for those item descriptions. Question, should I use REST or messaging? Sync or async? Now let's actually take a look at this. Because here, if I use RESTful calls, for example, in synchronous communications, show me my wish list means that the wish list service has to go and execute an API call in our API gateway for a get for product one, two, three. And then correspondingly, I get my contract. But what does that contract look like? Because I'm doing this call right here to this get product one, two, three, I most likely am returning all of that information in the catalog. Now, there are tricks we can do to avoid this kind of large payload coming across. I could try to use uh, field selectors with little parameters. Uh, GraphQL is another choice. Um, but the point is, with synchronous communications, um, I'm calling the same endpoint everybody's calling, and I end up getting um, what's called stamp coupling, which is a contract with a lot of data I don't need. Now, one of the responses here sometimes is to say, oh, well, I'll just create a new endpoint for you to get to wish list that says, give me just the product description. But now all of a sudden I'm getting all of these endpoints in my gateway and it starts getting confusing about what's inner service and what's publicly available. So one of the ways we could do this, and you can start to see this is our problem here. Which API do I call? Do I have a special one? Do I make a private API gateway? And those are all really complicated aspects of synchronous calls. Um, however, if you recall in lesson 105, 
I talked about stamp coupling and I just referred to that. If you haven't seen that lesson on 105, I would strongly suggest actually uh, taking a look at that, either pausing this video and looking at it, or we only have a couple more minutes to finish up, uh, then taking a look at stamp coupling afterwards. Um, because here's the problem. When I want to say, show me my wish list, one of the ways of avoiding all of that stamp coupling is to use request reply messaging. I send a request using messaging over to a request queue and I get the reply back of all of those item descriptions in my reply queue. And the key point is here that now I have a different contract than the public API right up here. And consequently, because of that, what I'm actually developing, if I choose to use messaging or asynchronous, I call this pseudo-synchronous communications. As a matter of fact, if you're curious about that, that was in lesson one, my very first lesson uh, over four years ago, uh, well, to the date of this recording. <laughs> but effectively, what I'm creating is my own private API with my own contracts. This contract right here and the payload I'm sending across is only the item descriptions. And so consequently, one of the words of advice, and this is what I usually do, is for north-south communications, in other words, communications from business requests, from user interfaces or other systems coming into our API gateway, I do like to use REST. However, for inter-service or east-west communications, uh, my preference is actually to use messaging in a pseudo-synchronous or somewhat asynchronous fashion uh, so that I get that private API, avoid stamp coupling, and all the bandwidth issues associated with that. And so this provides a little bit of guidance on a different kind of use case. The answer, of course, to this question is, it depends. And what I really wanted to uh, kind of accomplish here is to just to show you some of those trade-offs associated with making this decision between asynchronous and synchronous communication. So anyways, uh, this was lesson 137, REST versus messaging. I hope that, uh, that kind of whetted your appetite for a little bit more of this that we'll be, we'll be looking at in the next lesson in two weeks. And so stay tuned in two weeks for the next lesson where we'll expand a little bit on the REST versus messaging and look at a couple of other use cases that you should consider when making this choice. Thank you so much for listening.